Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We're bringing back some CDH gameplay with some commanders you've seen recently, and one who hasn't been on the channel in quite a while. I'm about to get into the deck descriptions and opening hands for you guys, but before I do, I thought I'd just let you know, I'm not going to go into every detail and every nuance of what the deck is and what makes it tick. If you are interested in any of them though, please check the description below, we'll have deck lists for them and some primers as well. I'm excited to see what everybody has brought to the table today, so let's get started with Matt on Tyam Luminous Enigma. This is an Abzan deck that focuses on getting out a devoted druid combo to make infinite mana, mill his entire deck, and then get a win from there. But he also plays a lot of creatures, so if the game does get too slow, he could eventually win by beaten face. He keeps an opening hand of Windswept Teeth, Phyrexian Tower, Hashep Oasis, Imperial Seal, Dark Confidant, Draineth Magistrate, and Opposition Agent. Up next is Logan on Carrick, Son of Yogmoth. This mono black deck tries to power out Carrick as fast as possible to take advantage of his powerful Phyrexian ability. And with it, he'll then try to set up one of a few infinite combos to kill all of his opponents. He'll keep a starting hand of Ancient Tomb, Buried Ruin, Inventor's Fair, Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, Conqueror's Flail, Necropotence, and Raziketh the Foul Blooded. Up next is Jason on the partner commanders Vile Smash the Fierce and Thrasios Triton Hero. Some of you might know this deck as Curious Control. For those of you who don't, it is a 4 color control deck that plans to control the board until it can set up its win con, usually Athas's Oracle line. Jason's starting hand consists of a Marsh Flats, Yavimaya Coast, Chrome Mox, Force of Will, Deadly Rollick, Tainted Pact, and Thassa's Oracle. Well, what do you know? There's the combo right there. Moving on, last but not least is Chandler on Magda Brazen Outlaw. This mono red deck's game plan is to make as many treasures as possible, and then use Magda's second ability like a toolbox, searching up interaction, card advantage, stacks pieces, or even game winning combos. He'll keep an opening hand of a Mountain, Ancient Tomb, War Room, Strip Mine, Mana Crypt, Arcane Signet, and a grinding station. Now that we've seen opening hands, we're about to hop right into it. But before we do, be sure to check the description down below. As stated before, you can find deck lists down there if you're curious, but our social media links are down there too, so you can stay up to date with all things Smooth Brain EDH. We've got a podcast and public Discord too. We're also sponsored by the great overlords at Dragon Shield. If you're looking to protect any of your expensive magic cards with either sleeves or playmats, be sure to check out their website. Everything I mentioned will have links in the description below, but that's enough of that. Let's hop right into the gameplay. Looks like Matt wins the die roll. He'll start off with a windswept teeth and crack it, losing one life and finding a bayou to the battlefield. Then, after a good shuffle, he'll tap the bayou for a black to cast an imperial seal. He searches his library for any card, shuffles his deck, puts that card on top, and then he'll lose two life. On Logan's turn, he'll play an ancient tomb as land for turn. He'll then tap it for two, also taking two damage, and cast a conqueror's flail. He'll then just pass the turn. The turn is now Jason's, and he'll start off with the Yahimaya Coast. He'll then free cast a Chrome Mox, and when it enters the battlefield, he'll imprint a Force of Will under it. This lets him cast Thrasios on turn 1, and he'll take a damage to his Yavimaya Coast. After this, he'll pass the turn. Now on Chandler's turn, he'll start off with a Mountain. Then he'll free cast his Mana Crypt. Ethan, who's spectating, will give us a... <coughs> Chandler will then tap his Mana Crypt to cast Arcane Signet. We'll get another... <coughs> He'll then tap the Signet and a Mountain to drop a Metallic Mimic that he peeled off the top this turn. He'll obviously name Dwarf, and then he'll pass the turn. Now on Matt's turn, he'll draw the card he tutored for, play a Hashep Oasis as land for turn, and think for a little bit, ultimately deciding to pass the turn. Logan on his turn starts off with an Inventor's Fair. He's noticeably missing black mana. But if he can get Carrick down next turn, all his black mana problems will be solved. So he'll just pass the turn to Jason, who will start off with a Marsh Flats as land for turn. He'll then cast a Bloom Tender, taking one to his coast. He'll then pass the turn after that. The turn is now Chandler's, who has a Mana Crypt trigger on his upkeep. He claims Tails never fails, but unfortunately he gets a heads and has to take three damage. Now in his main phase, he'll play a War Room as land for turn, then tap for two and cast Magda. Believe it or not, Magda is a dwarf, so she'll enter the battlefield with a 1-1 counter. After this, Chandler will move to combat and swing the Mimic at Logan. Remember, always chip away at Adnos decks. And when the Metallic Dwarf becomes tapped, Chandler will make a treasure token. Post combat, he'll just pass the turn to Matt, who will start off by playing his Phyrexian Towers land for turn. He'll then free cast a Jeweled Lotus, then crack it for three white, tap for two more, taking one to his Oasis, and cast his commander, tie him. And after this, he'll pass the turn. But Jason decides to stop him on his end step to fetch with his Marsh Flats. But Matt has a response. He'll sacrifice his commander to Phyrexian Tower, adding two black, then cast a Dark Ritual for three more. He'll then flash in an Opposition Agent, seeing as he might as well to shut Jason off of a mana and keep Chandler from searching for anything with Magda. 
The opposition agent will resolve, and so will Jason's searching. So Matt gets a good look at Jason's deck list and decides to take an underground sea out of there and exile it. It'll be represented with that card sleeve. Moving on, the turn is now Logan's, and he'll start off with a Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. He'll then cast Carrick by paying 4 mana, taking 2 damage to his Ancient Tomb, and then paying 6 life. He'll then pay 6 more life to cast his Necropotence. And casting this spell will put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Carrick. He'll then pay 7 more life to exile 7 cards with Necropotence. He'll then move to his end step, and those 7 cards will go to his hand, and he has to move to clean up. He'll then discard, I mean exile, cling to dust, reanimate, vampiric tutor, cavern of souls, and culling the weak. The turn will then be passed to Jason, who unfortunately has nothing to do this turn, so he'll just pass the turn. Chandler will stop him on his end step to sacrifice a treasure and tap for two more to activate War Room. This lets him draw a card and lose a life. Now on Chandler's turn, he has a Mana Crypt trigger on his upkeep. Unfortunately, he loses again. After this, Chandler will immediately move to combat, swinging Metallic Mimic at Matt and Magda at Logan, not expecting either of them to block and he'll get two treasure tokens when they attack. But Logan has exactly what he needs in a Slaughter Pact. He'll cast it, targeting Jason's Loom Tender, and this will put another counter on Crick, making it big enough to block Magda. Jason will respond by tapping for four mana to activate Thrasios, scrying one, bottoming it, then revealing Jamonic Consultation and drawing it. Moving on, Logan will block Magda with Carrick, gain four life upon damage, and Magda will die. Matt also takes two. Now in Chandler's second main, he'll recast Magda for four mana, remembering to put the plus one plus one counter on here, here in a second. He'll then play another mountain as land for turn, tap for two, and play a looter scooter. After this, the turn is passed to Matt, who starts off by also immediately going to combat and swinging opposition agent at Jason. Matt will then play the exiled underground sea as land for turn, then just pass the turn to Logan, who has to pay for a slaughter pact on his upkeep. He'll start by paying the black with two life, and then pay the other two with ancient tomb, taking two damage. This deck is the epitome of life as a resource. Moving on to his main phase, Logan will start off with a buried ruin as land for turn. He'll then tap Nykthos and pay 2 mana to it to activate its ability, making him 6 black mana. He'll then use all of it and pay 4 life to cast Razaketh, the Foul-Blooded. This'll get Crick another counter, so Logan will move to combat and swing for 5 lifelink at Matt, who can't block it, so he'll take it. Logan will then pay 3 more life to Necropotence to refill his hand, and then passes the turn to Jason, gaining those exile cards. But Jason will stop him on his end step before he gets those cards, and free cast a Deadly Rollick, targeting Matt's opposition agent. Matt has no way to stop this, and he knows nobody's going to help him, so he decides to respond and sacrifice it to his Phyrexian Tower for black mana. And wanting to be as mana efficient as possible, he'll tap for three more and cast Ad Nauseam. He'll reveal Finale of Devastation, Eternal Witness, Illidomri's Call, Utopia Sprawl, Chrome Mox, Earthcraft, Overgrown Tomb, Elves of Deep Shadow, Praetor's Grasp, Wall of Roots, Carpet of Flowers, Crop Rotation, Noxious Revival, and decides to stop there losing a total of 19 life. After this, the Deadly Rollick no longer has a target and will fizzle. Still on instep, Jason will cast Noxious Revival by paying 2 life, returning his Marsh Flats to the top of his library. It'll resolve, Logan will get his Necropotence cards, and then Jason will draw the Marsh Flats. Now, you already saw Jason's opening hand, so you know what happens next. He plays the Marsh Flats and fetches for a Bayou. Then, after a good shuffle, he'll tap for 2 blue, taking 1 to his coast, and drop Ye Old Thoracle. He asks if anybody has responses, and Chandler says he does. He'll tap Magda and crew his Looter Scooter. This will get him a third treasure, and then Chandler F6s. Thorkel will resolve, and in response to its trigger, Jason will hold priority and cast Demonic Consultation. Nobody has any responses, so it'll resolve, and Jason will name the Almighty Brushwag. He obviously doesn't have one in his deck, so he exiles the whole thing, and then Thassa's Oracle's trigger resolves, and he wins the game. So, yeah, that's it. A very explosive comeback from Jason. Way to go, man, that was awesome. So uh, yeah, that was surprisingly a short game, but you know, this is CDH, so that's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes you do just have games like this where decks win on turn 4 or 5. And I would love to put a second game in here for you guys, but unfortunately it was getting pretty late when we were playing, so I just gotta end it here. But I will say, if there is one thing I want to comment on about this video, it's that the free spells from C2020 are insane. Jason got back into the game and even won in just one end step and his turn. But anyways, you guys, it's time to put this video to rest. Thank you so much for watching. We love having you guys watch our videos. If you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and leave a like as well. Don't forget to leave a comment because we always love hearing from you guys. And also check out all the links in the description. We've got deck lists for you guys to check out, social media pages, podcasts, 
discords, and even a Dragon Shield link that you should totally go buy some Dragon Shield products with. Oh, also, speaking of discords, we also do community games at least once a week. So if you ever want to play with us, feel free to join and play against us here at Smoothbrain EDH. As always, you guys, thank you again so much for watching. I hope you all have a smooth day.